You see, hi, this is Graham Jacob. Now, uh, I am the most worthless kind of person you can imagine, okay? Now, when it comes to scandals, the integrity of Christians are always questioned. Now, this obviously has problems for how people look at Christians, but a Christian never is getting another person to follow a Christian. They're getting someone to follow Jesus. Now, there was a title of a U2 album, How to Dismantle a Bomb, or How to uh, Dismantle an Atomic Bomb. I think, well, either will, will suffice. Uh, but Jesus is the bomb that's dropped onto humanity. Now, atheists and any other group, okay, and that includes other religions, are always going to swarm like a swarm of wasps or hornets, and they're always going to buzz around your head when there's a big scandal and he they, they bully and try to remove the integrity and the unity of Christians, okay? But you can't destroy the unity of a Christian because the unity of a Christian comes from Jesus and Jesus has the utmost integrity. You see, you need to dismantle the integrity of Jesus. But when you do that, you see, Jesus is represented as a, a, a person that does everything in the manner that God wished humans to be, okay? Now, hi, I lost my train of thought. Uh, I, I ended the video and I couldn't think what I wanted to say but I've just rec got my thoughts back together again now you see Jesus has the integrity okay and it doesn't matter well, obviously it matters how Christians present themselves but I mean it, it mat if you want to destroy Christianity, okay, you don't go after the Christians. You have to destroy the integrity of Jesus. You have to go to the source. You have to go to the source of Christianity, okay? Now, the source is Jesus Christ. Now, he is portrayed as... A man of integrity. But here is the problem you encounter. When you accuse Jesus of not being a, a man of integrity, you are wading into deep waters that are going to cause... It's going to cause the drowning man. Here's another U2 song. The drowning man. Because if you if you know your Old Testament, okay, you'll know the story of Job. And Job was a man of integrity. Now, here's the funny thing. 
Doctor Dawkins laughed at this. Okay, Doctor Dawkins was a uh, was briefly this uh, talking about Job, and he said, "Oh, God, a." Uh, asked the Satan to a uh, look at Job and marvel at his a uh, faith in God. Okay? But here's the thing the Satan, right? Is the prosecution. He's accusing this upright fella called Job of not being the, the person that he passes himself off as. Now, but Dr. Dawkins is doing that very thing with Jesus. And I, I don't know if he knows that or is aware of this, but he's accusing Jesus of not being a man of integrity. So in a way, Dr. Dawkins might as well be the Satan. Well, his father is the Satan. You see, even Jesus said, well, I can't remember what he said exactly. He said, I think he was talking about well I can't remember what he was talking about but he was he was talking about a if you follow God your acts are wholesome okay now if you are the father of Satan no if you if you follow and trust the father called the Satan then you are the believer of lies and hate and persecution. You see, Dr. Dawkins, he is the son of the Satan. Because he believes the lies about how Jesus was not who he claimed to be. You see, Jesus echoes what happened in the Garden of Eden. You see, Satan possessed the snake and the snake manipulated Eve into saying the character of God is not what he revealed it as. That was the big lies thrown and thrust into the mind of Eve and she believed it. Okay? Now the same sort of thing is happening with Jesus. Now the, in, the integrity of Jesus, the character of Jesus that is portrayed, now that is the truth. Okay? Now Satan influences his children, okay, into saying that Jesus is not who he claimed to be. And this is where the big problem lies. You see, Why is it that people want to have integral characters? I mean, it's very, it's, it's very bizarre. A, the, I want to split the world, oh, the people living in the world into three categories if you don't mind, okay? These are very general titles, right? The Jews, okay? The Christians and the rest of the world, okay? And the rest of the world can include any faith or a, any non-faith 
grupp. Now, it's very bizarre. There's a very there's a strong parallel going on in the world. It's it's clearly seen in the Jewish faith, right? And each generation they want a person to lead them. They want they want a person to have the right character to lead the, their the, the nation and bring them together. And it's expressed a by word, literally by word, a, when Elijah is in the cave. I think it's in First Kings. At the very big no, if it's Second Kings, I think it is. Was it First Kings? It must be Second Kings. Was it First Kings? Well, any is it. <laughs> It's at the very beginning when Elijah is in the cave and he's talking about how he has failed his ancestors. He has not lived up to the being the person that uh, the Israelites wanted people to be. Now, if you go to the, the rest of the world, okay, this is secularism and other religions, okay? Now, they also, if you look at the branches of knowledge, okay? Everyone worships the most perfect specimen in each branch of knowledge. Let's look at music, okay? Beethoven and Bach. Now, these are two most obvious names. Uh, they are seen as the perfect if you want to express music you have to admire these two people if you want to be a musician you have to understand these two giants okay let's take science we have Dr Richard Dawkins the, the lead in genetic biology, uh, well, I don't know what the mouthful of that word is. Uh, genetics, something to do with genetics. He's the. He's seen as the leading authority on genetics and biology, because people want to know. the utmost knowledge of a particular branch of knowledge because they think that branch of knowledge can influence for the greater good something meaningful for human existence and we have it in sports people we put number one first who's the greatest sprinter who's the greatest high jumper who's the greatest martial artist Who's the greatest comedian? Who's the greatest mathematician? Who's the greatest writer? Who's the greatest playwright? Who's the greatest boxer? Who's the greatest tap dancer? Who's the greatest lover? Who's the greatest magician? And it goes on and on and on. And everyone is reaching up to these people that Try, who, who try to progress in their field to get to that high position and everyone's looking at them in awe trying to figure out if I get some of this person my life will be fulfilled but very rarely does that happen because every one of these people bicker amongst themselves they pick fights they bully people. They love people that they shouldn't love. And it brings down humanity. Okay? Now, if we go on to Christianity, 
Here is Jesus Christ. Now, Jesus Christ takes a different approach. Now, he, he takes on nothing that the body can achieve, okay, but how the body functions. You see, the tongue can be the most problematic thing in a human's mouth. It can say some nasty things. And Jesus exposed the very nature of how humans think and act. Now, if you want to master your body, you see, an athlete masters their physical body, but very rarely do they master the heart of their body, where everything stems from. You see, in a plant, the root the root brings in all the nutrients so the plant can be strong. Now, the root for Jesus was God, right? And with this root, everything that Jesus said or did showed a perfection. Just like a ballet dancer, right, can go on their tiptoes. Jesus doesn't have to worry about what comes out of his mouth because because he I don't want to say something that's a uh, because <laughs> he has perfect faith. But basically that sums up. Here's a man who knows what trust is. But that, that's, that's basically what it is. It all comes down to a matter of trust. Now, so you, you see the an atheist, okay, is reaching out for a person of some some great a uh, what well, they reach they they're, they're desiring a person to show them the way of how to be something because they they look at the world and they do not see a person that they truly want to trust But we should be a we should be returning to you see it this is the truth. Well, I can't say this is what the truth Jesus was talking about, but this is part of the truth what Jesus is talking about. I am the truth. 
Atheists want to see a perfection in human life. They are, they can picture it. They can imagine it. They have the the prophecy. The, it's like this is secular prophecy. They prophesy that some at some point humans are going to get to a point that they've mastered their human body. But. The, the, if <laughs> atheists will never get that it will never happen for them in the way they suppose because okay Jesus is presented in a way right that shows him as a, a good person okay now if an atheist who says to a Christian why are you not good? Why are you not like Jesus? I'm a bit puzzled because in another uh, argument, these very people are scoffing the very character of Jesus. They don't want to know the man, Jesus, who was kind and good. Which is a bit, I don't know what, what's going through their mind. I don't, go, Jesus prophesied that would be what would happen. He says, people will hate me. But if atheists want people to be good, why are they hating a person who demonstrated goodness. It doesn't matter if you think the character is true or false. Because a character, you can appeal, you, a, a character can appeal to someone. That's why people like reading books. So, why is it Can an atheist explain the hate they have of the character Jesus? Because that's a real question a psychiatrist, a, a, a psychiatrist, an atheist psychiatrist should answer. Why, why, why are atheists double-minded on this idea of a perfect man? You have the perfect athlete. You're desiring the perfect man and yet, you know, it doesn't really matter if a uh, if you don't think the character is true, because you can still live by what that character did. Now, but it would be very strange, because not one fictional character that has ever been put onto page has ever been conceived as well as Jesus. So you can sprout all of your opinions about how Jesus was uh, created in the minds of Jews. That just won't wash Anyway, I'm sure I've lost my train of thought while putting this video together, but there you go. Hope something can be salvaged from it. Until the next time, bye.